Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be teaching you how to overclock your controllers, more specifically your PlayStation 5 and your Xbox Series controllers, but this will also work for your Xbox One and your PlayStation 4 controllers. So please stick around and enjoy the video. And if you do enjoy the video and you learn anything from it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me a lot and it takes the channel, it takes us to another level. So I really appreciate it. Now let's get right into it. And for those who don't completely understand what overclocking your controller is, I'll get a little bit into it just so that you understand what's going on when you take your PlayStation or your Xbox controller and you connect it to your PC there is going to be a bit of delay a delay of which you wouldn't normally see if you were connecting it to their respective consoles so in order to overcome that delay and speed things up you would overclock your controller for the PC so that you're moving as fast as someone who's using a mouse and a keyboard I hope that makes sense so just to illustrate it a little bit if you take a PlayStation or an Xbox controller the amount of millisecond time for those controllers to communicate to the PC is anywhere between 4 to 10 milliseconds but once you overclock it it'll be 1 millisecond which will be the equivalent to if you were playing with a mouse so that's what will keep you competitive as a controller player in the PC space now that's a very slight overview of what's going on over here I might just make a video going in depth about what overclocking your controller is maybe but that's pretty much what it is now let's get into it and shout out to Victor Alex Kovic his comment is the one that actually put me on to what overclocking controllers are and the differences that can occur between each controller and what can really happen Happen. so thank you there actually that's actually the reason for why this video is getting created so like I always say make sure to comment let me know what I'm doing right and wrong because it will take us to another level and I do read the comments I appreciate the engagement let's get into it but not only am I going to show you guys how to overclock your controller I'm also going to show you guys how to test and see for sure that it's overclocked yes once you start playing the video games you'll see and notice the differences but it's also really cool to be able to see the numbers as they change. It takes us to another level, it takes you to another level. So in order for that to happen, you're going to want these three links. I will leave them down below. D is for Windows, X Input Test, and Lord of Mice, HID USB, okay? So, but first, you're gonna to come to the first link, which is the HID USB mic, I mean, the HID USB link. And so when you get here, you're gonna click this, this one right here, HID USB, F dot zip okay so you're going to get there you're going to click download okay then when you click it you're going to extract all right this is WinRAR I don't know about you I'm not paying for WinRAR it really it literally works um but I think I don't know anyway so you can just exit out if you're like me and then you can just right click driver okay and extract to a specified folder now for me, I like to really leave things on the desktop, makes it easier in my life, but you can really extract it to anywhere you want. I'm going to extract it to desktop, okay? So click desktop, click okay, perfect. Now when you go to desktop, you're going to see that bad boy right here, you see? So driver right here, okay? Then we can actually just move that here just for ease of, see, of sight so that you can see it. Then you're gonna go to this next link right here, which is X input test. You're going to come to where it says latest version. Click latest version. Then you're going to click X input test portable right here. Right, there you go. So click that bad boy. It's going to install or download. And see, again, WinRAR, you can exit out. So it's going to ask X64 or X86. That's just asking what type of computer and processing power that you have. So if you don't know, all you have to do is click, is go to down here and type about, right? Click about your PC, and it says it right here for me, 64-bit operating system. You see right here, an X64-based processor. Wonderful. So now we know that I should be clicking X64. So you're going to extract X64 to the desktop or wherever you would like. So boom, I've extracted it to the desktop, and you'll see it's right here as well. So now we have driver and X64 right here, perfect. Now as for the downloading of DS4 Windows, that's a little bit of a thing, it can definitely get deep, so I made another video for that. Please go check that out. It's not mandatory, but it is part of this tutorial. If you already have DS4 Windows downloaded, you can keep going, but if you don't, you can go check out that tutorial because it is a little bit long and I'm really not going to get too in depth with it. Now you're going to enter driver, okay? When you get into driver, you're going to click setup. They're going to ask you if you want to change the publishing. You just click yes. Now you're going to go to where it says mice and then click all. Now this is where things get a little juicy, okay? So what's going to happen here is that we have 
all of our devices, right? You're going to be looking for the one that says headset, microphone, wireless controller, audio endpoint, that, uh, you know, USB composite device. That is what you're going to be looking for from the PlayStation controller. I'm going to be doing this whole thing really with the PlayStation controller, not so much the Xbox controller because Xbox controllers, when you overclock them, the performance doesn't really get to one milliseconds. It really gets to about two to three. They're, they're just not as good as PlayStation controllers. What's funny is that Xbox is more compatible with PC, but their software, the way that it works, does not get nearly as much performance out of it as a PlayStation controller will. But I'll quickly show you anyway what it would be like if you had an Xbox controller hooked in. So you put the Xbox controller in. This is an Xbox Series XS controller. And instead of saying like USB composite device or anything, it'll literally just say Xbox controller right there. Xbox controller, X input, compatible hit device, all that stuff, okay? So <coughs> again, if you made it this far in the video, make sure to bless me. <coughs> no, type bless you down in the comments below. I really, I, I get, my nose is very sensitive. So X input compatible HID device, right? So there it is. Now, again, we're not really going to overclock this because it's not going to be that effective. So we're going to move to PlayStation. But here's what's going to happen, okay? You're going to click Audio Endpoint, all right? Then you're going to click 1000 when actually, funny enough, and I learned this through the Ultimate Comparison, the Ultimate Controller Comparison video that I'll also leave down below in case you really want to get more in depth with this. What I learned was that normally, and for pretty much every other controller, you would click 1000, right? Because you're trying to make it run at 1000 hertz, which equals one millisecond response time. But the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller is literally so powerful and so good that if you run it at 1000, you're actually going to get 8000 hertz. And as good as that might sound, because you're thinking to yourself, the faster the better, no, if you go that fast, a lot of video games won't even be able to handle it. Some will, some won't. One example that won't be able to handle it is Battlefield 2042. I tried to get a recording of it, but I couldn't even do that. It was just all over the place. It was so janky. It was bad. So what you're really going to want to do to actually make it run at about one millisecond, you're going to drop it down to 250, okay? Now, this is a game-by-game, -game, a game-to-game -game situational issue, right? So depending on the game that you're playing, you can always try out that 1,000 setting, okay? But if that 1,000 setting is too much, drop it back down to 250. That's when it was running at a true one millisecond response time, which is more than good enough to compete in PC gaming with a controller. But now let's just run it at 1,000 anyway, just so that we can experiment. So now what we're gonna do here, you have it set to 1,000, you gotta click, you gotta check filter on device, okay? So you see now it says yes, it says 1,000, and you see the buy, the buy interval, or the interval or whatever, it says six, okay? That's going to change to one once you click install service and disconnect your controller and reconnect it. Or you could just click restart here. So I'm going to click restart and you'll see it drop down to one. You see that? So now my controller will be moving at a one second, one millisecond response time. But if you don't believe me, just watch. No, hold on. What we're going to do here to double check this, you're going to open up DS4 windows. Okay. Get into DS4 windows. This same controller that you have, you're going to have it as default, or you could set it up as an Xbox controller, but you can really just leave it as default because default is an Xbox controller. That's what DS4 Windows does. That's kind of like a specialty. It tells PC games that the PlayStation controller you're using is actually an Xbox controller. So, you know, DS4 Windows be lying on your behalf so that you can have a great gaming experience. Now, ain't that something? So you're going to leave it as default, okay? And the reason why you have to leave it as default is because if you try PlayStation colors, right? What we will try won't work, okay? So let's say we leave it as a PlayStation controller mapping or PlayStation colors. If you look at my other tutorial, you'll see why I had these other profiles set up. But you'll click X64, you'll try to run some samples, and it won't work because it won't recognize a single Xbox controller. So in order to, again, bypass this, you gotta go back to DS4 Windows, have it set as default, okay? Now that it's as default, you're going to go back to X64, all right, go and type in 2000 and you see where it says, it says ready waiting for 2000 samples. And you'll see that it's going to have a one millisecond response time. You see that? Wow. 
not only is it one millisecond, oftentimes it's less than one millisecond, you see? 0.89, uh, 0.72, oh, here, here's this one, 0.68, millisecond response time. Now, ain't that something? That's really good. Now, in case you don't believe me and you're like, well, maybe it was like that before. No. Let's go back to, if we go back to the filter, right? Now, here's how you can undo what just happened. If you uncheck filter device, go back to default on the same PlayStation controller that you had clicked, click install service, and then click restart, right? You'll see it jump back up to six, okay? Then you see, and you can see that it's at four milliseconds. I'm really fast, so it's really a little bit less than four milliseconds. You see a lot of threes there, but you see it's really at like three to four milliseconds. That's what's going on there. So those are the differences that happen when you overclock your controller. You see why you may want to do that if you're going to be playing controller on PC. Now I'm going to show you the response time when you set it at 250 as per what I said earlier about 1000 versus 250, 8000 and 1000 hertz when it comes to the PlayStation 5 controller. Now again, you're going to do everything that we did earlier. Make sure that you have DS4 windows open for the PlayStation controller set as an Xbox, AKA default. Then you click on samples, boom, ready to go. And you can see it's still going to be that one millisecond response time. So you don't have to worry about, oh, well, it's not, you know, it's at 250 instead of 1000. I really wanted the 1000. No, you see, it's the same exact performance. So as you just saw, an overclock controller compared to a non-overclock controller is completely different. You can see the performance is much better when it's overclocked. And that's why you're going to want to do that if you plan on being competitive in the PC space with just a controller. Now let me show you how overclocking an Xbox controller really doesn't make much of a difference. Okay, so here we have the Xbox controller. You don't need DS4 Windows because Xbox is already compatible to Windows. So all you have to do is just start up the, the samples. I already went and overclocked it I set it at 1000 since it's not a PlayStation 5 controller we don't have to worry about the 1000 you're actually going to want to have it at 1000 so you set it to 1000 you put the filter on the device it's already you know it's already at one so we're going to click samples and here we go but as you can see even when overclocked this controller isn't doing much we're looking at seven milliseconds for the max it's 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 just not that good. It's just not that good. Overclocking an Xbox Series XS controller really bears you little to no fruit. That's the purpose of overclocking your controllers. It really is much better for PlayStation than it is Xbox, but it's best to overclock any controller that you have if you plan on playing on PC. And again, if this tutorial was of any help to you, all I ever ask in return is for a like and a subscription. It really takes this channel to another level, and I really do appreciate it. Now, Chuck Avelli was in, taught you what he needed to teach you, and now Chuggavelli is out. Peace.